So today I'm gonna go book shopping at Barnes and Noble and I've been looking around everywhere in my area because I wanted to find the best, prettiest, biggest Barnes and Noble. And so it was a bit of a drive, but here I am. And I brought my husband along so that he could film me. For me, I could just focus on the shopping, you know what I'm saying? <gasps> so pretty. Ooh, sales galore. Oh my gosh, I already so to see so many things that I want. It's gonna be bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna want too many things. Ooh, I love this cover of Emma. Oh, that's so pretty. Ooh, seventeen dollars. Yikes. Ooh, new exclusive, exclusive new chapter. It's a pretty cover. I read this book already. I thought it was fun, very engaging. I don't know if it was one of my favorites, but it definitely kept me interested throughout. So, oh my gosh, I love this cover of Dune. Wait, that is so cool. Oh, perfect. Okay, the fiction section's right here. Okay, so I do love reading, but I'm pretty new to booktube and book talk and all that. So, you know, I've been hearing about these YA fantasy series that are all the rage. And I feel a little bit of FOMO, you know? So I think I want to give them a read for myself too. Ooh. I've heard of this one. I don't know too much about it, but it looks really cute. The cover it says it's $3 off. This one is a love story, I think, but it sounded really fun based on the synopsis. So I might get this one a try. Oh, whoa. Guys, you know I love Jane Eyre, and this is such a pretty edition. I'm such a sucker for like a pretty cover. But I already have this book, but oh my gosh, like the pages are so thick and it feels so good, you know? I know I don't need it. It would make a great gift, I think, though. So I'm in the classic section right now, and I'm here because there's one that I really wanted to look for. And that one is this, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, which you're probably thinking like, how have you not read that yet? I think this is a really, really cool, unique cover. Um, but I do feel like that means it'll be more expensive. Let's see if there's like a more normal one. This is really cool though, very unique. Wild, wild, wild. Oh, found it. $9, half, half the price. Okay, my favorite section. I do love fantasy, but I'm so not in the know with YA fantasy. Okay, so this is obviously one of, I think this is in the series of Court of Thorn, Thorn and Roses, but I think this might be number three or something. So I would need to find number one and two first. I love this cover so much. I think it's so pretty. He's a great fantasy author. Oh my gosh, okay, this is seriously one of my favorite fantasy series. For those of you who haven't read it yet, highly recommend. Okay, I'm not in the right section. I need to go to YA Fantasy, I think. Where is it though? This isn't right. This isn't where the romance should be. Hmm, which one should I get? So here's one. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. It says six summers to fall in love, one moment to fall apart, a weekend to get it right. I mean, I heard really good things about it. I heard it's really popular. It feels more like a summer read to me and we're still in winter. So I don't know if I'm gonna get it yet, but I do want to read this. It's definitely on my TBR for 2023 at some point. <laughs> this cover is so magical, cute. So I'm back to these kind of like little table sections and this one's all about dark academia. It's a quote by ML Rio. You can justify anything if you do it poetically enough. And as you know, ML Rio wrote, if we were villains, which I love. So now I'm kind of thinking these are the things that I should be giving a try. I mean, I already read The Secret History, which I enjoyed. I'm getting too distracted because my goal was obviously why a fantasy series today, but everything else is catching my eye. Oh, love this book, would highly recommend. I believe it's sci-fi. 
a post-apocalyptic setting. Um, the Perks of Being a Wallflower is a classic. It's really fun. Again, not the goal. Oh, these are LOL. Spicy talk. I don't know about these. I don't know if I'm in the mood for something like that. Oh. This is okay. There we go, young adult. Okay, we found it, guys. It's getting worried there. Young adult to me is like a guilty pleasure. Like, I feel like I'm too old to read young adult, which I don't think is true at all. There's a part of me that kind of feels like I'm just doing it for entertainment. You know, I'm not really learning anything, but I've heard of that one, but I don't know if that's what I want to go for today. Oh, I've heard of this one too. I've heard of this one and this. Six of Crows. Okay, this is really popular. I had it for like over a year. I finally read it and the sequel, like maybe earlier this week. So I'll definitely talk about that at the end of the month with all the other books I read in January. But for now, let's see. Oh, Dance of Thieves, this is what I wanted, but there's only one copy and the sequel isn't here. Dang it. Okay, well, at least I can still get this one because this is one of the ones on my list that I wanted to read. Looks like this books are very popular. Duh, asking on book talk. Call me basic, but I mean, I need to know what all the hype's about, right? Like, I can't just only be reading like literary fiction and historical fiction. I also need to dabble into why fantasy. Because I like fantasy. So I think I'll like these two. There's just too many, it's overwhelming. Love that. That's literally my junior high years. I was literally obsessed with Edward. I feel like I need to read the Caraval series at some point. But the thing is, like, I have no idea what it's about. It's so pretty. Like, I want to read these simply because they're so pretty, aren't they? Oh my gosh. How come I want to talk about these ones? Should I read the back? Oh shoot. Am I going to discover something new right now? Sorry. <laughs> Ew! What the frick? No! Pocus Pocus! I don't even want to read it. I just want to have it. Wendy? She evil? What if Rapunzel's mother drank potions from the wrong flower? Is this like Marvel's What If series, but then book version with Disney? That is absolutely shocking. What if Ariel had never defeated her? What if the Sleeping Beauty never woke up? What if Belle's mother cursed the beast? Wait, what? I don't even want to know about those things. It's scaring me. Oh, I found it. This is what everybody's talking about. It was on so many people's best of 2022 like what do you think should i stop at this whoa i'm going i'm going okay i'm going oh a basket this is a smart idea these books get heavy goodbye ya i'll be back for you soon what is it what is it doing here since when did they start selling for Joel raven conkin Oh, is it all in here? Okay, thank you. There's a lot in this guy. Watch out. So I just got back from Barnes & Noble and I immediately jumped into my little reading corner. It's just this little corner of the couch that I like to sit in when I read. And they think it's so cozy because there's this little ledge here where I can just place my books or my journal when I wanna take notes in between reading. And then I have a space where I can stretch out my legs. I have my cozy blanket, I have my little friends. So it's just perfect, it's very cozy. And I got a ton of books. But my excuse was, is that it's the new year and therefore, you know, I need a lot of books if I'm gonna read more this year, right? So actually, when I went to Barnes & Noble's, what I really wanted to do to start off the year was to read some of the books that I've been hearing a lot about. There's been a lot of YA fantasy series that I've been hearing a lot on BookTok and BookTube and 
To be honest, um, I do like YA books, but I haven't read them in a long time. I think partially because I felt like maybe I was too old for it now, but I do love the fantasy genre. And also, you know, uh, YA fantasy books are just so easy to read because you really get sucked into the world. And once you're in it, it's just easy to like, just keep going and the writing is so readable. And so I decided, okay, you know what? I'll just dabble into some of the really popular series that I've heard of and see what I think about them. And so that's what my goal was going in. But obviously my eyes were wandering, so I did pick up some other things too. So let me share with you what I got. Okay, so first I got the first book in a Court of Thorns and Roses series. I think it's called Akotar. But anyways, I just got the first book, so I thought I'd try it out. And if I really like it, then I'm gonna go back for the rest of them. And I heard that this series starts off YA, but then it turns into more of like an adult fantasy series. Yeah, I don't really know too much about it, which I'm really glad about. I'm glad that nothing was spoiled for me. Um, on the back it says, when 19 year old Huntress Fairy kills a wolf in the woods, a terrifying creature arrives to demand retribution. Dragged to a treacherous magical land she knows about only from legends, Fairy discovers that her captor is not truly a beast, but one of the lethal immortal fairies who once ruled her world. At least he's not a beast all the time. As she adapts to her new home, her feelings for her for the fairy, Tamlin, transform from icy hostility into a fiery passion that burns through every lie she's been told about the beautiful, dangerous world of the Fae. But something is not right in the Fairylands. An ancient wicked shadow is growing and Fairy must find a way to stop it or doom Tamlin and his world forever. Okay, yeah, so I mean, it sounds like there's some romance there. I definitely heard that it is a fantasy romance book. So yeah, we'll see how I like this one. I'm excited. I'll probably start with this one just because I know there's so many more books in the series. So I kind of want to see how I, what I think of it. That way I can go and get the rest. Next, I have a series um, that I saw a lot on people's favorite books of 2022. It's the Cruel Prince series. Um, I think it's really popular. And to be honest, I don't know too much about it other than people really seem to like it. So I got this one and then I got the sequel already, which is called The Wicked King. And then I got also the third book in the series. I believe this is the third and last one, The Queen of Nothing. And I mean, the covers all look definitely very <laughs> fantastical. And yeah, honestly, I don't know too much about it. It says sharpen your blade, harden your heart. Um, I'm sure that this is also like a fantasy romance book too. But yeah, I just decided to get all three because like as I was just looking through the pages, there is about like 360 pages or so, but I feel like that's not too long. Also, there's a, like wide margins and not too many words on each page. So I feel like I could potentially fly through it. Hopefully I'll like it because I already bought the other two. But yeah, I'm really excited to give these a read because again, I've been hearing great things about them. Next up, I have another YA fantasy, and that is called Dance of Thieves. So I think this is just a duology. There's this one, and then the next one is called Vow of Thieves. I only got the first one, so I'm gonna give it a try and then see what I think. I really like the cover of this. I think it looks so pretty. And this one is a stunning new adventure set in the kingdoms of the remnant. I feel like all of these are kind of like there's different kingdoms involved. So there's like political elements, but also romance elements and then fantastical elements, which are all kind of done slightly differently. But on the back of this one, it says a formidable outlaw family that claims to be the first among nations, a son destined to lead thrust suddenly into power. Three fierce young women of the rotten, the queen's premier guard, a legendary street thief leading a mission determined to prove herself, a dark secret that is a threat to the entire continent. When outlaw leader meets reformed thief, a cat and mouse game of false moves ensues, bringing them intimately together in a battle that may cost them their lives and their hearts. It's kind of giving me um, Six of Crows vibes. I'm pretty sure the story's really different, but because it was mentioning thieves and different things like that. So yeah, there's this one. Okay, so the next book that I have is just a standalone novel and it's called Bella Donna. And I think that the cover art is very pretty and just like all the lettering, the colors. I love the purple with all the flowers. It gives me like a very gothic um, feel. I think there was like a bit of a gothic romance and just like the style. But yeah, even the inside is so pretty. 
it's kind of eerie if anything like do you see that i think that's like two people embracing but anyways i don't know too much about it but it it says that this gothic romance is filled with desire betrayal and of course death except death in this book i think is a character because it says death was there before her watching waiting his presence was intoxicating and familiar and it took Cigna by surprise as it always did writhing shadows cast into the vague shape of a human so dark and void of light that it was painful to look at him and yet looking at him was all Cigna could do all she could ever do she was drawn to him like a moth to a flame and so it seemed was he to her I mean it could potentially be disturbing because again I think when they say he they're referring to death but you know we'll see because again Maybe it works, maybe I'll like it. It's definitely interesting and it, it catches my attention, that's for sure. So that's Belladonna. And yeah, so those are like the main um, YA fantasy books that I got that I wanted to give a try. And I definitely want to see how I feel about it and then hopefully I'll be able to finish all of those different series. And then just a couple extra books I got to read in between the series or when I want to take a break from all the YA fantasy romance. Um, I got a classic, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This has been on my reading list, on my TBR for a long time. I just never got around to getting it. But yeah, it's honestly a pretty short book. I think it's only like 200 pages, so I'm sure it'll be a really quick read. And I mean, it's iconic. So definitely excited to read this. And then next I have a um, love story. So this one is called One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Again, I'm pretty sure this is a really popular book on like TikTok or something. Um, I have read one of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. Um, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo maybe a year or two ago at this point. I don't really remember. And I thought that was really fun. I definitely got into the story and was, I think I finished that book pretty quickly because I was just very engrossed in the story. But yeah, this one sounded very interesting because it's a breathtaking new love story about a woman unexpectedly forced to choose between the husband she has long thought dead and the fiance who has finally brought her back to life. So in this one, apparently her husband dies in a helicopter accident. And so, you know, she finds another guy, she moves on, all this stuff. But then she finds out that her husband is actually still alive. So now she has to choose between her like old husband, I guess, and then the new guy or her new husband or fiance that she's with. And so I have no idea what's gonna happen, but that is just very interesting to me. So yeah, we'll see. I think this will be a fun read. And then I also have this one. This is kind of a random pick because I feel like I normally don't go for these kinds of books, but it's called Before the Coffee Gets Cold, a novel. And it's honestly, it's really short. I feel like it's a very quick read. And part of the reason why I got it was because I just loved the cover. Like, I just think that that's so cute, right? And then also it said $3 off. So it's kind of like, okay, I better get it then since it's $3 off. Um, and then on the cover, it says, what would you change if you could travel back in time? So I think it's about a book where if you could go back in time, who would you want to meet and talk to? So just a short little book about human relationships and missed opportunities, the enduring power of love, it says. I mean, all things that I really like, so I'm excited to give this one a read and just see what I think about it. I think it's a very lighthearted, like if I'm just kind of in the mood for something simple and short, then I'll definitely just pick this one up. Okay, and then last two books are quite random. And one of them actually my husband picked out and told me that I needed to read. And it's not because he read it, it's because he loves the movie. And that is Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. I don't think I've read anything by him. Honestly, the cover is really intense and quite intimidating. It like borderline scares me. But again, it's such a short read and I feel like some of these fantasy books, each of them aren't too long, but I feel like because they're all like a series, it's kind of long. So it's nice to have these little short books. And part of the reason why I got it was because it was a buy one, get one 50% off. So I got this and I also got this book called Panin. And this one is written by Vladimir Nobokov, who I believe is the writer of, or the author of Lolita, which is very iconic, super popular. 
I actually haven't read that because there's a part of me that's a little too hesitant to read that. Maybe one day I'll get around to it since again, it is so iconic. Um, but yeah, I had this on my list because I think honestly a while ago, um, I heard someone talking about it and I wanted to give it a read. So yeah, I saw it on um, the little, one of those tables that they have on display that say buy one get one 50% off. So I thought, why not just pick up these two? Very different from the other ones I got, but I think it's nice to have a good variety. It says on the back that Penin is a professor of Russian at an American college who takes the wrong train to deliver a lecture in a language he cannot master. Penin is a tireless lover who writes to his treacherous Liza. A genius needs to keep so much in store and thus cannot offer you the whole of himself as I do. Penin is the focal point of a subtle academic conspiracies he cannot begin to comprehend, yet he stages a faculty party to end all faculty parties. Interesting. And then yeah, obviously you guys probably know Fight Club already. I actually haven't seen the movie, but maybe after I read the book, I'll watch the movie too. I know that was a lot and I don't always buy this many books at a time. If anything, I rarely do, but I kind of just let myself go a little bit, you know? So yeah, I'm excited. I think that I want to do like a reading vlog of me reading some of these YA fantasies so that I can give my, um, my thoughts and my reactions as I go. And so yeah, maybe that might be in the next video. But anyways, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching and for coming along with me on this book shopping and book haul video. I hope you enjoyed. If you've read any of these and let me know what you thought, or if you haven't read any of these, but you plan to, then let me know. Maybe we can read alongside together. And yeah, that's everything for today. I'll see you in my next video.